Hello everyone. So uh, now we will be starting with the periodic section of lab two exam. And in this video, I will be discussing the general scheme of how to go about a periodic station and what are the differences in terms of data gathering uh, when dealing with a periodic case in comparison uh, with general adult medicine. Okay. So the first point that I want to make here is uh, in periodic cases, uh, more often than not, you will be talking to the parent of the child because the child is either very small uh, or the child is, uh, you know, somewhere else at nursery or at school uh, or at home and uh, you are talking to the parent. So all your uh, interpersonal skills here should be directed at the parent, okay? Because if um, any of you has worked previously in a periodic department or they are parent themselves, then they must know that parents tend to get very, very anxious when their child is sick. And some of the symptoms like uh, very high grade fever or seizures, they are very, very frightening for the parents, okay? So you must be very empathetic in all these scenarios, uh, the periodic cases. Um, some things might appear very, you know, minor or normal to you. Like for example, uh, if a child is only 10 months old and the mother or the father is saying, oh, my child is not walking yet, is it a problem? Uh, so from your point of view, this is normal, but you should not um, you know, uh, talk in such a tone uh, that you know, um, you make the parent feel that they are over, you know, they are, um, they are overthinking or they are overreacting, okay? So, uh, please be aware of that. All right. Uh, then I want to discuss a little bit of nomenclature just for your understanding. So a neonate is a child which is between uh, one day to 28 days old. And infant is between one month to 12 months. Toddler is between one year to three year. And preschooler is between three year to five year. Okay. So there was a little bit of uh, nomenclature. And now we will discuss data gathering. Okay. So the first, the first step in data gathering or history taking is introduction. Just so like all other station, you will introduce yourself and then you will confirm identity. So if you are talking to the parent, then you will, uh, you know, uh, confirm the parent identity. So you'll ask uh, their name and then you will ask their relationship with the child. And then you will ask the child a uh, full name and his age. Okay. So this is basically confirmation of identity. Then the next step is uh, history of presenting complaint. So first of all, you will ask open-ended question, how may I help you today? And they will give you a symptom, you know, maybe fever. Um, so the common symptoms are in children are fever, rash, um, breathing difficulty, wheeze, okay, ear pain. These are common symptoms in patriotic. So then you will ask open-ended questions about the uh, symptom. You will ask, can you please tell me a bit more about it? You will ask um, Odipara and Socrates. For those who do not know what Odipara and Socrates is, Socrates is a mnemonic that we ask uh, when the presenting complaint is pain. Okay, so it can be pain in any part of the body, ear pain, headache or whatever. Then we ask Socrates and Socrates stands for site of the pain, onset, corrector, radiation, aggravating factor, uh, treatment or relieving factor uh, and severity. Okay, and Odipara is for symptom other than pain. Okay, so for example, the symptom is cough. Then we will ask Odipara. So Odipara is onset, uh, duration, intensity, um, progression, aggravating factor, relieving factor, and anything else. Okay, anything else is basically for the DD question, which is the next part. So based on our symptoms, we will, you know, ask uh, questions about uh, three to four differential diagnosis um two to four relevant differential diagnosis and we will also ask the red flag questions so in periodic uh history taking this is a unique thing that you need to bear in your mind that these four red flags you will ask in any sick child no matter whatever the symptoms are the child even if the child has fever or the child is vomiting whatever the symptom is but in a sick child in each and every case, you will be asking these red flags question, okay? So these red flag question essentially tell you whether the child is any in any immediate danger. Uh, if any of these is uh, positive and the answer is yes, and you are in the GP practice, then you will immediately, immediately refer this patient to the hospital, okay? If the answer 
to any of these question is yes, then you will refer this patient immediately to the hospital, okay? So these red flags are not being able to eat or drink, uh, drowsy, it's having seizure, and uh, dehydration. So how will you ask the parent? You will ask the parent, is he able to eat and drink normally? Is he active and playful or is he drowsy? Um, has he had any fits? Okay. And have you noticed any dryness of his mouth? Is he crying without tears? Is he, wet is he wetting his nappies as often as usual? Okay. So we will ask these questions in each and every sick child. Then we ask head to toe questions, which is another unique uh, thing uh, to the pediatric history. We don't ask these questions in adult patient. So again, in uh, every pediatric, you know, sick child, we will ask these questions. These are head to toe questions. So starting from, you know, the head, we have fever. Uh, rash, rash is a generalized symptom. Fever and rash are basically generalized symptoms that involve the whole body. So we will ask about any fever. Has he had any rash? Then we have eyes. Uh, so we will ask about does he shy away from the light? Uh, any discharge from the eyes, nose or ear? Is he pulling his ear and crying? Okay, which means otitis media. Uh, then there is mouth. Uh, so we'll ask about any vomiting. Then uh, after mouth, we have neck and then chest. So in chest, we'll ask about lungs. Um, that is respiratory symptoms. So any cough, any wheezing, any breathlessness. Uh, then abdominal pain. So for abdominal pain, we will ask the question like, does he pull his uh, legs to the tummy and crying? And then any problem with the V or poo, okay? So these are nine head to toe questions that you need to ask to start from the journal, uh, the journal symptoms that is fever and rash that involve the whole body. And then we have eyes first. So uh, shying away from light. Then uh, below eyes, we have nose and ear. So any discharge from eyes, nose and ear, okay? And does he pull his ear and cry? Then below nose, we have mouth. So any vomiting, and then we have lungs, so any cough, wheezing, or breathing problem. And then we have tummy, so any tummy pain. So we will ask the people his legs to the tummy and cry. The child is not able to speak. Then we will ask in you know uh, the question like, is he able to? Uh, does he, is he pulling his legs to the tummy and cry? The child is uh, able to speak. Like for example, he's a, a preschooler. Then we can ask the question directly: Is is he complaining of any tummy pain? Okay, and any problem with the V R two. Then past medical history, we will ask about uh, any medical condition that the, that the patient is having. So has he been diagnosed with any medical condition at all? Then um, any, you know, uh, medications uh, that, the, that the child is on, any allergies and any family history. So family history will ask, um, does he have any other sibling, any medical condition? That the siblings are having that runs in the family okay and then we have the bird questions the bird questions are also uh unique to the pediatric history okay so here bird is basically a mnemonic where b stands for birth history i for immunization r for red book d for development and the other d is for diet okay so birth history will ask whether he was born full term or preterm and how was his birth okay was it normal was it traumatic no, the cesarean, all right. Um, and sometime, uh, if it's relevant, you will also ask antenatal history. So any problem, um, before his birth. Okay, immunization. So an immunization will ask about is he up to date with his jabs and any recent jabs. So jabs is basically, it's a you know um, it's a slang for vaccine. So you will ask about any is he up to date with his jabs and any recent jabs. Okay. If there are any recent jabs, then you will ask about which jab was that and, uh, you know, it, uh, when was that, okay? Uh, red book. So, in UK, the GP practices or the health visitors basically have a red book in which they plot the child's uh, growth and development. So, we'll ask about are you happy with the red book? So, this is basically an indirect question about the growth and development of the child. Then the uh, this D is about development. So we'll ask two questions about gross motor development and two questions about fine motor development depending upon the age of the child, okay? So for example, the child is six months old, then we'll ask about, is he able to hold his head? Um, can he sit without, can he sit with support, okay? 
so i will uh, you know this is very uh, this portion is really challenging for a lot of people they're not able to uh, remember the normal you know milestones that are achieved at each age and what uh, is deemed as abnormal at a certain age so i will discuss uh, growth and development you know gross motor development fine motor development and developmental delays in the next video uh, so then you will be able to you know uh, you will be able to pinpoint where uh, there is a developmental delay in a child and um, you know how, what to do about it then okay then the next is about diet you should ask about the uh, child's diet um, is he breastfed if the child is very small you will ask about is he breastfed is he formula fed is he taking his feet as normal is he gaining weight if the child is a little bit older like a toddler or a preschooler then you should ask about his diet um what does he eat breakfast lunch and dinner okay uh social history uh social history here is basically who is the primary caregiver uh, caregiver and how is the environment at home etc so you will ask about who takes care of the child um, and who else is involved. So who takes care of the child is basically the primary caregiver. For example, uh, the mom is a housewife, so she's the primary caregiver, but the dad is also involved. So um, you should ascertain this. And does he go to nursery or school? Any concern raised by the school or the nursery? Okay. How are things at home? And what do you do for a living? Uh, if you think in some cases uh, where you suspect non-accidental injury, in those cases, you should also ask if there is a health visitor or social worker involved. Okay, so this was all about periodic history taking and then you will move to the ideas, concerns and expectation just like any other station and then there will be examination and the management part. Um, I will discuss the examination and management in, uh, you know, for each specific symptom as we go through the course. Uh, so I hope it was helpful and I will see you soon in the next video.